let's talk about God. You're a Jehovah Witness member, right? Well, let me tell you, I'm not a Jehovah Witness member, okay? I was raised with Jehovah Witnesses. I was raised with Jehovah Witnesses. My dad was, my mom was. And then uh, I got baptized as a Jehovah Witness when I was like 13. But it was more of a like influence, not by my parents, just by like my friends were doing it, everybody was getting baptized. So I made a decision based off of my friends doing it, not so much because I had to make a decision to be a Jehovah Witness. And it was never pressured by my parents. So I got baptized. And then when I was 19 years old, I left, a, we call it the congregation. I left it. And I left it from, uh, from 19 to like 30 years old. I mean, I would still go, but I was not participate in any of the meetings or anything like that because I, I, I was just not acting right, man. I was sleeping around. I was partying. I was fighting. You get me? That was very, quite the, the opposite of what a Jehovah Witness should be. Yeah. You know, if somebody goes and knocks on your door, brother, and then, but they see me at the club the day before, that's yeah. hypocrisy, man. I, I didn't want to give them a bad name. See, the worst, the, the ones that I don't like to call themselves Jehovah Witnesses are the ones that are intentionally are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, but yet they want to still claim the name of Jehovah Witness. But we can't. That's not right. You get me? You're not, not only are you tainting what these people stand for, I'm not saying they're all perfect, they're all imperfect human beings just like anybody else but some are making an effort it's like when you're married you you know if you're cheating on your wife if you're doing things but you say but i love my wife and yeah i'm married to her it's like your wife saying yeah she takes your last thing let's call her aguilar but she's going around sleeping around behind your back doing this but but yeah but this is my husband and i'm, and I'm proud of being an aguilar no nah, bro like don't even call yourself one because now don't even tell people you're you're an aguilar because what you're doing is now you're disrespecting my last thing you're disrespecting what, what we stand for as a family foundation so when I left for like 11 years, I never wanted to, like, I never told people I am a Jehovah Witness because I did not want to taint the name of what they stood for. Does that make sense? And so when I was like 31 years old, I decided to come back. I decided to come back and, and you know, you know, start working on being on the Jehovah Witness again. My wife decided to get baptized. She got baptized. And then uh, when she got baptized, uh, she was doing good. I kept on slipping up. And what I mean by sleeping up, I kept on making mistakes. Like, and it's something that I could off already. Or I already cut it off, but I've always, I've always been a, uh, I've always liked marijuana. Marijuana has always been my my thing, my go-to. It's not that I would smoke every day, but I liked it. That was something that I was very, I, I loved it, you know. And I would be high as a kite sometimes. And it kind of slowed you down. It did slow me down because of the ADHD. Yeah, it did slow me down, and it helped. But at the same time, it also I also abused it. And so then I was realizing not only that, but also my temper. You know, I would, you know, somebody would say something, I would get in somebody's face, ready to smash it in. And I wasn't really praying, I wasn't reading my Bible, so I stepped away. I said, you know what, I'm going to keep going to the meetings, I'm going to keep going to the congregation. But, I, but then, uh, you know, I talked to the, to, the, to, the, to the, you know, the brothers who were in charge, we call them the elders. You know, yeah. we talked to them and that we made a decision, well, they've made a decision to say, hey, look, you know, we appreciate you being honest with us. You know, obviously you're not ready yet to be a Jehovah Witness again. I said, because you're more than welcome to come to our congregation, but as far as having the, the title Jehovah Witness, I don't have that. I don't have that title, and not not because I'm still smoking. I cut that off already, but I still I still haven't felt like I am representing what I should. If I'm gonna be representing something, I want to represent it the right way. And they're not asking for perfection, but and but it's also a decision. If I'm saying I am going to be what what represents Jehovah the right way, mm -hmm. and until I make that decision 100, percent I'm not gonna call myself a Jehovah witness. Does that make sense? So at this point, you're not. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, but I, I, I'm 100% agreed with everything that they teach. And I, I, I respect them because they teach everything from the Bible. I don't care about concepts, philosophies, theories, nothing. It's what the Bible says, and I respect that. So I still congregate with them. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness at the moment, but I congregate with them. I go to the meetings where they're at. My wife participates in everything that they do as well. But at the moment... I'm not a Jehovah Witness, but I 100% am I'm alignment with what they teach. And I go, and I never fail. I still go to all my meetings as well. Is that a cult? It's not a cult. A cult is where they like, they force you, and I don't know what a cult is. But one thing, one thing I, I, we all have the free will. The difference is like, you know, in my house, for example, I have my, old, I have my three kids, right? If one of them starts, to, let's say Alexander the Old starts to smoke weed, starts to sleep around, do a bunch of mistakes, he's been a bad influence for my other two kids. What do I do? What would you do? I'd talk to him. Talk to him. What if he doesn't stop, doesn't want to change? How old is he? Let's say he's 20 years old. Oh, he's done. He can go and live on his own. He can go live his own. Does, yeah. does it mean he's no longer welcome at your house? Mm, he is. He's welcome, but does he have to be living there? 
No. No. Right? He doesn't have to reside with them. Correct? If he, if he isn't he, if he doesn't even have an intention to change to change, right? He's not he's not living with us. He's not living with you. It yeah. doesn't mean he can't come over for dinner. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that, right? Like what you tell me, you can't even come over for dinner. No, that wouldn't be right, right? But you would still say, hey, we love you, but until you make the changes, then you 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 can't live here, yeah. right? That's the way Jehovahnesses are. They're 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 like, hey, look, this is what the Bible says. This is what the standards were. This is what the Bible says, and it's not negotiable. See, the reason why people say right now, you can go to any church, uh, churches now, and we have pastors marrying gay couples. So where's the standard at? You have men, like, and this is no disrespect to anybody, but you have men that are not married. They live with their wives. They live with their girlfriends, but they're they're part of like the youth pastors. I don't. I'm like, wait a minute. That's called fornication, bro. Hmm. It's in the Bible in the same verses: adultery, fornication, murder. And alcoholism and homosexuality is in the same. It's in the same category. They skip those chapters. So right, it's like, dude, like, okay, wait a minute, bro. Like, so this is all on the same level in God's eyes. But you're a youth pastor. How have you committed a fornication? It's the same thing as committing adultery or having homosexual or being a homosexual, right? So for me, it's like the thing that I think a lot of people are misunderstood of what Jehovah's Witnesses are because they actually have to, they follow the standard of what it is. And maybe not everybody's perfect, but they try to make an effort to follow a standard. And the moment that people are saying, you guys are too strict, you guys are like this, you guys are like that, like, I'm sorry that it's non-negotiable. I'm sorry that we're not going to bend over and say, eh, you know, as long as you feel good. You know, it doesn't work like that. God is a God of order, of, of order and respect and honor and dignity and righteousness. And if that's not being respected, then how can you, so people are always criticizing for, for them having respect and honor what the Bible says, for them respecting the standard. I don't agree with that. So tell me whether that's true about Jehovah Witnesses or no. So you can go to a career and have a career if what you're a Jehovah Witness? Yeah. You can. You can have any career you want. You're stimulated to earn a lot of money, more money, if you can? King Solomon was a king of Israel, son of David, and he was the wealthiest man that ever existed. Yeah, but those are Christians. Jehovah Witnesses are Christians. Are Christians. Yeah, so Christian somebody who follows Jesus. Yeah. So Christians are Jehovah Witnesses. Right? Like, I'm sorry, Jehovah's are Christians because we follow Jesus. You just, Jehovah is the, the name of, of the God? Jehovah is Jesus' is father. Yeah. Allah, Javed, you can have different names, but his name is Jehovah. See, back then they didn't know how to pronounce the name. So a lot of times when you see the Almighty, Father, right, uh, God, if you go back to the original Hebrew scriptures, it was a certain logo, like a certain way of saying his name that people couldn't pronounce it in, like, in our day or our day. In Latin, it was just, it was four hard. Letters. Right, it was like a four letters, right? It was Javed. That's what people call him Allah, Javed, uh, you know. Yahweh. Yahweh. So, but if you if, if you grab it, it's Jehovah. And we're still not sure if that's exactly how you say it. But if you go back to the original scriptures, they subtracted the word Jehovah. And they put different God, Lord, Almighty. They subtracted the word. Mm -hmm. But the original scripture says Yahweh. And then that's why it's like... The, Jesus always said, my father is, is greater than me. My father, my father, my father, my father. So we respect as Jesus being the Messiah, the Son of God. The one, but we also not the God, the creator, the Almighty is the Father. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, and, and like my son, I'm eventually going to, like my son, when he gets older, yeah, he's in charge and things are going to go through him. Ultimately, I'm the, I'm the boss. I'm the man, right? I'm, I'm, but... If they want to talk, like when I used to run my dad's business, when I used to run my dad's business in Mexico, I was like 19, I was 17 when I went out there for a bit. I lived out there for a year. The, the like people, some customers will show up like, well, I want to talk to the boss. I'm like, well, I'm his son. He goes, no, I want to talk to the boss. I'm like, listen, l let me tell you something. When, talking to me is like talking to like my father. I have the same power to make decisions in this business. So, but I want to talk to your, I want to talk to your dad, not to you. I want to talk to the boss. I said, ma'am. I'm telling you that whatever I say goes. So that's the thing with Jehovah's Witnesses. We respect that Jehovah is God. And the son who's by his side, the person who's going to get the throne is his son, Jesus. That's what we believe. Is that true that Jehovah's Witnesses can't celebrate any holidays? For it's not that we don't birthdays? celebrate holidays. It's not that we can't. We, can, we have the free will to do whatever we want. The thing with us is that we believe in is pagan. If you go back to every single holiday, go back to Halloween, go back to any holiday, go back, and it's murders and pagan 
traditions that eventually became holidays for us today. What about Christmas? Well, Christmas, let's, let's be honest, that start, remember the, the kings, the guys that, like, uh, like for us, us uh, Hispanics, there's something called los reyes magos. Well, that star that people put on top of the tree was the same star that Satan, remember Jesus was going to get killed? They were looking for Jesus to kill him because they knew the Messiah was going to be born. So there was a king that, said, that sent out a bunch of like, they were, they were killing all the kids that were being born, any, all the boys, because they knew the Messiah was going to be born. So the king intentionally was trying to kill them. So that's why uh, 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 Jose and Mary, they had to leave. Yeah. And they were hiding out. Well, there was a star that God didn't put there that was guiding those assassins to go kill Jesus. So that star, they followed the star. The Bible says that star that God didn't put, it was Satan who led them to where Jesus was at. That's how they found him in the outskirts. Well, when the men got there, their heart had churned because they realized that was the Messiah, so they didn't kill him. Who put the star there? Satan did. Well, when you go back to Christmas, who, what's on top of the tree? The star. Whose star was that? And by the way, if you actually do the math, when he was actually born, and when he got baptized, in the, the, he was not really born in December. He was born like somewhere in November, October. We don't know the exact date. And you know what's also crazy? Go back. And whenever you have a chance, and anybody who's watching this, go back and watch where Christmas comes from. It's not a Christian uh, holiday. Yes. It's actually a pagan holiday. The Satanist. The, the Christmas tree is not. The Satanists who worship like the devil, they, they laugh that people celebrate Christmas because that's actually a pagan. So most of the holidays, all the holidays, you go back, there's either murder, somebody died, or some pagan tradition. Now, now people are celebrating. And guess who benefits off of it? The government, the economy. So now it's not only just a pagan tradition, but it's also an, an economic boost for America as well. So the only ho holiday that Jehovah Witnesses uh, celebrate is the Last Supper, right? Yes. And what, when is it? It's in uh, April? It's April. April, I want to say. Yeah. yeah, April, like one of the days in April. And so that's the thing we do to celebrate. We're like, we do anniversaries. We, weddings, baby showers, absolutely, general real parties, but anything that has to do with like paganism and stuff like that, like birthdays, Jesus' cousin was murdered in a birthday hmm. as a gift. Yeah, that's why a lot of celebrate. a lot of murders were due in birthdays. So birthdays were not celebrating now like they were back then, but then when they were starting to celebrate, it was there as gifts. There, Jesus, Juan the Baptist got murdered in a birthday, his own cousin. So us and Jesus never never once did ever say that Jesus celebrated his birthday. So for us, Jehovah's Witnesses, we look like we're the bad ones. Like, oh, you guys, like, like, why you guys are the bad ones? You guys don't celebrate because you guys are strict. I'm like, listen, man, I don't need Mother's Day and Father's Day, okay, to 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 make sure my mom and to thank her. I don't need those days. Like my kids, I've never celebrated their birthday. It doesn't mean on that day I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, it's whatever. But I'm like, hey, son, guess what? God gave you another year of life. I'm so happy you're healthy. It's so anniversary, right? Of the day you were born, but for me, it's like I'm not gonna go buy them a cake, I'm not gonna go celebrate birthdays. Like, I just took my sons to Six Flags on, on Monday. I, I show them, I show up with gifts almost all the time for my kids. You get me? So it's like, I've never celebrated my birthday, I never have, and I've never felt like I've missed out on anything. I've gone my, before I was got married and everything. My dad took me to Puerto Vallarta, Huatulco, Acapulco, Mexico DF. I've gone to so many different, I went to Disneyland, California Adventure, Six Flags. I went to all these different places. Never once did I celebrate my birthday. And I experienced more than most kids did their whole entire life. Okay, what about uh, blood transplantation? You can't do this thing? God is very sacred. You can get, you can uh, give your blood, but you can't take it. It's a great question. So, so, I'll put it this way. Blood in God's eyes represents life. Okay? That's one thing humans cannot create is blood. I believe they can right now. I mean, try but blood is something that represents God's life. That life of blood is what in, in the Bible is, is what it means to God. God gives life, blood. That's why people still depend on, on human uh, uh, blood transfusions because if we could create blood, then people wouldn't be doing, give, donating blood. So blood represents life in God's eyes. He says, this is something that you should not take or it's not something that you should be able to give because this is mine. So he, he is very strict on get on blood. He says you should not eat, take, and take. It says in the Bible, that's something that's mine, right? So Jehovah's Witnesses take that very serious. That, he, that That's something very serious for God is blood. So we know that we should not take, eat, consume blood at all. Into your body. You shouldn't get no, we shouldn't. strange blood to your body. There shouldn't. And by the way, there's other research. If you actually do research, there's 
people have also got sicker and died from blood transfusions. And there's been, the doctors can say, and there's actually proven signs that there's better ways of keeping people alive than doing blood transfusions. There's ways, 1,000%, that's even healthier, better, and safer for the human body than doing the blood transfusions, just so you know. But, for example, that's a very strict thing. So we don't take blood. And by the way, my loyalness to myself is not greater than my loyalty to God. So I'm not perfect, but I know some of His commandments. And one of His commandments is that. And so for me, it's like, you know, you know what, man? I'm going to respect that. Like, for example, and I'm going to say this in front of everybody. If I'm in the death, if I'm in the hospital and I need a blood transfusion, I have a card that tells me that I don't accept blood. I'd rather die in my hospital. I'd rather die in the hospital. And my wife knows this. And my kids know this. And my mom knows this. And we all agree that if I'm dying or any of us are dying and there's a blood transfusion, we're not taking it. People say, I would never do that. Well, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I'm going to respect God. I have more faith in God than I do a blood transfusion to keep myself alive. When Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. Remember? He's, he's like, hey, go sacrifice him. Why? Why was he willing to sacrifice his son? Because he trusted God. And right before he cut, almost slit his throat, he says, hey, all right. That was a test. That was a test. So for us, the way it is, is like, yo, respect what I'm giving you, the commandments I'm telling you. Okay, God forbid, but I'm going to ask you this. If your son or your daughter lays on the deathbed, mm -hmm. and if only this thing blood can save their life. Would you do that? I would not give them blood. Someone else will give. No. I would not. My kids have been in the hospital. My kids one time had a surgery. I specifically told the doctors, listen, what if something happens? happens? No blood. Let me tell you why. People believe when they die, they go to heaven, right? I don't believe that. I believe what the Bible says. The Bible says when we die, okay, we're asleep. And what is supposed to happen? A resurrection. So, but Armaged, you think society is going to keep going the way it's going? What do you think is going to happen to society? What does the Bible say? Every, the days are going to get worse, worse, and worse. Right? The Bible talks about that. What's Armageddon? Armageddon talks about that there's going to be what? There's going to be an Armageddon. That God's going to bring justice and destruction. It's promised. There's been a lot of prophecies in the Bible. They've all came true. 100% of all the prophecies that God ever said have came true. And guess what he says as well? You know what he says? The Armageddon is going to come. He's going to destroy the wicked, put an end to everything. There's going to be no more pain, no more cry. It's all in Revelation, I think 24, uh, chapter 24, uh, or verse uh, 18 or 24, I forgot. And it says there's going to be no more pain, no more war, no more sickness, no more anything, because those things have passed. That's what the Bible says. You know what it says? He says, he says he's going to resurrect people from the tomb. And where are going to live? In paradise all over again. The first intention of the humans being on earth was for us to live in a paradise. That's the reason we were actually created to live in paradise. Adam screwed it up. But why did Jesus die? Why? For no reason? Pardon our sin. What about our sins? Why would Jesus die if there is no reward for it? What's the reward that we're going to have? The reward we're going to have is that we're going to have the opportunity to live everlasting life again in paradise. That's why Jesus died for us. That's why he sacrificed. So he died for our sins, right? Well, he died because when Armageddon comes, there's going to be a paradise in the world again. God's going to make this world a paradise again. So I rather, I rather respect God's word like Abraham did. My son dies. I hurt now. I go through the pain now. But I'd rather see my son and live forever with him in paradise. That's the hope I have. And that's what the Bible says. And you know what? For you to make that decision, you really need to understand. Well, like we need to understand what the Bible says. And we need to have that much faith in God to be able to respect His commandments. And I know a lot of people won't agree with it, but so, it, until you really understand what the Bible and the promise and what, our, what paradise means, you would make that sacrifice. So, the, are, were there any changes uh, in Jehovah's Witnesses uh, as a community in the last 100 years, for instance? There was. So what if, God forbid, once again, God forbid, please, this will mm -hmm. never happen, but if this happens, you don't do the blood transplantation mm -hmm. to your son, he dies. After five years, after five months, after five days, they say, you know what? We've made some changes. Now you can do this for you and for your kids and for your loved so, ones. So based off, what I've, based off what I know as well, I don't care what the organization says. I'm going to go based off what the Bible says. But the Bible says you can't, you can't eat blood. No, consume it. Consume. But that's not consumption. Consume in any way you can. It, it, like we could get deep into it whenever we have a chance. I wish I was a little bit more Bible handy with it. 
But if we go to the scripture and you actually do research on what blood is and how it's supposed to be taken, how it's supposed to be respected, it's very specific on it. Very specific on it. Very specific on it. We won't come eat. We won't consume. We won't put in our body. We will never give or take blood. But only human blood or animals? Any blood. Animal so blood. So if you blood. eat steak, you like it medium rare or uh, well done? Well, the, the meat is meat, right? But, but yeah, we make sure the meat is very well cleaned. We make sure that there's... And well cooked. Well cooked. Yes. So because we want to make sure like... But even the, 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 when you see the steak, that's not really blood. It's the color of like... Of the like of the of the meat and stuff like that, people. Hey, that's blood. It's not necessarily blood, right? But uh, blood is like in our veins. You know what I mean? But but what I'm getting at is like, yeah, we 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 respect that a lot. Like we can still eat animals and stuff like that, but we won't consume none of the blood, brother. And, and so the thing is this: people are saying, I don't, that's why I don't like Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. It's and I get that. And a lot of people are gonna be very contradicting to what I'm saying, and that's fine. I, I I respect your beliefs. If you believe in the Virgin Mary, which I don't believe in that stuff. Right, respect that. I respect it. if you believe your pastor and a Catholic guy says you can worship all kinds of different saints. The Bible was, was clearly very clear about that. By all means, you know a lot of people believe in the cross, which that cross came two thousand years or a few years after Jesus. I want to say four hundred years after Jesus died. Scientifically, you can't even hang a body in a cross. You put nails, your your own tenants will rip it off. The cross came after a king put a, a mark on Christianity with the cross. We don't even believe in the cross. Go look at the pharaohs that had the Israelites as slaves in Egypt. They had a cross. It looks different, but I had a cross. So there's so much like things like I can go and like go to everybody's religion and say, well, what about this? The Bible contradicts this. The Bible contradicts this. The Bible contradicts this. I can do that to all the different religions for every single individual. I really can. And by the way, that's why Jehovah Witnesses go door knocking every single door across the world, very organized, just like Noah did when he was preaching about the flood. If we believe in the Bible, we know the flood took place. And we also know that Noah was preaching for 40 years, and people laughed, and people thought he was crazy. How, how do Jehovah's Witnesses call people that uh, say, I'm done, departed? Uh, what do you mean? The one they, that leave the church. Oh, uh, well, they're called them more inactive. Inactive. They're not inactive Jehovah's okay, Witnesses. So, for instance, if me and my wife and my kid, we all are Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. If I leave the church, my wife has no right to speak with me, to talk with me. To, oh, no, to she does. Me. Like me. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm this fellowship. Uh, that's the word you're looking for. It's called this fellowship. Yeah. Well, they make an announcement. They said this individual is, has, you know, is no longer a Jehovah Witness. So what happens is uh, back in the day, um, in the, in the, in the, in, even Old Testament and New Testament, but specifically New Testament as well, it talked about that anybody who, and there's scriptures, because obviously when you go through that phase, you know, we have to read the information, what the Bible says. Because it says everything's connected to the Bible. It has nothing to do with my own constant philosophies. I don't care what anybody has to say. I don't care if there's a person who's like, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. But if their constant philosophy is not aligned with the Bible, that's, it's in through one ear and out the next. Does that make sense? Like, I don't care. I don't care who it is. If it's not in the Bible, I don't respect it. Very simple. And so we read. You know what the Israelites used to say? They used to hate, uh, they used to hate back then the, the, the taxers, people who would go in, the tax collectors. So the Bible was very specific. They said, if somebody leaves and knows that he's a sinner and he's making these mistakes and he's not, he's not repenting, he's not making changes, don't speak to him like you wouldn't speak to a tax collector. So back then, I don't exactly know. So like, don't associate with them. Do so not. even back then, they didn't like the IRS. Yeah, it's like that, bro. So they hated them. So they didn't want to speak to them. It's like, treat him like a tax collector. He goes, do not speak to them. Do not eat in the same table because he will influence you. And I'll be honest with you. When I was this fellowship, because I've been this fellowship twice. This is my second time. When I got this fellowship, um, some of the people who were not respecting those, those, command, those that instructions of the Bible, when they were Jehovah's Witnesses, they were not respecting it. And they were so toxic. I mean, I was young, dumb. I, 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 would, I hooked up with the, with the few of the girls that were because they, because they kept me in their circle still. And now I was making them do things that sh they shouldn't be doing. But in my conscience, I'm like, well, whatever. And so I've caught, so what we try to do is we try to protect the congregation as much as possible. They try to protect the congregation. So it's a discipline. It's not easy, bro. It's not easy that my friends are like, oh, man, you're making decisions to go. It's like your kids. If your son is, let's just say, let's say I have my son, right, or your son. He's smoking weed. He's fighting. He's doing drugs. He's, he's becoming alcohol, right? He's murdering people. He's joining gangs. And he's not repentant. And, and I have my, my son and my other daughter. I'm like, listen, man, as much as he's your brother and as much as we love him, it hurts us.
but I don't want you hanging out with your brother. So we're not believing in Jesus is equal it's, for it's you not, as to be with a criminal gang? No, it's not, it's not, it's not believing in Jesus. It's not that. It's when, when somebody who's a Jehovah Witness gets baptized, it's making a commitment. It's like yeah. when you get married, right? It's like this. Let's say, let's say my wife, let's say you and me are best friends. We're super, super tight, bro. Okay? We grew up together. I love my wife, you love your wife, but you cheat on your wife. And you go to clubs and you and you have sex with all kinds of women being married, and your wife's crying and hurting. And and then but then I keep talking to you, having good communication with you, and talking to you every single day. What do you think is gonna happen to me? I well, might, it depends. Well, if you the, think you're gonna if, do it this way as it's, well? It's if you it's like the Bible says, if you hang out with five stupid people, you become you become stupid. But there's a chance you're gonna say, hey. You look. You it, act like, a, I can. like an asshole. We're not I, friends anymore I, after three months of talking with. Right, you. we're not friends no more. So either you influence me, or I cut off the relationship. It's gonna, it's gonna go one or the other way. Either you influence me, or or I have to cut off the relationship because it's not healthy. So what the elders do is that if somebody like myself, like I kept on smoking weed, I kept on doing things I shouldn't have done, I kept on doing things I shouldn't have done. So I, I realized that I was not healthy for the congregation. So when they say, look, you obviously are not repentant. You're not stopping what you're doing, right? You haven't stopped. And, we're like, and they told me, like, we've met with you various times. They gave me various chances to change. I kept on making mistakes. I made that decision. So when they said, you can't be Jehovah's Witness no more, I respected it. It hurt, but I respect the decision. Does it make sense? I 100% yeah. respect it. Because they're just trying to protect the congregation, brother. So if you leave from a Jehovah Witness and your wife stays there, what happens? It's a situation now. Nothing. We're married still. It's my you're wife. You're still married? Yeah. Like right now, it's exactly the situation you're asking is exactly the situation I'm in. So I'm this fellowship of the congregation, right? I go to the meeting still. My wife's fully baptized. She's participating 100%. We're married. We, we, we still have sex, we still have food, and she's my wife. Yeah, but you go to church. You go to we, church. I still go to Bible study with her. Yeah. I still go. There's people that decide when they get, some people this fellowship, they leave and they never want to come back. That's on them, bro. Nobody can force you, right? It's like if your son ever leaves your house because he doesn't want to follow the structure and respect, that's his decision if he never wants to come back. The doors, are you ever closing the doors on your son? No. Are you ever saying, we don't love you, we don't want you around? No. But he needs to change, make changes in his life to be able to be. If you ever wants to live in the household, in other words, like, you know, be around, be co cohesive with everybody, he needs to make some changes, right? The reason I started smoking weed was because of somebody that I didn't start smoking weed until I was 26. You know how that happened? Because my best friend, who was also the fellowship, this, this fellowship, I talked to him, he's smoking weed, I started smoking weed, right? My, my other friends that were partying and drinking and stuff like that, I was a bad influence on them. These girls that made them make mistakes, I was the one that drove them. You don't think I realize? I'm self-aware. That's the problem. A lot of people are not self-aware. Like they're not aware that they're either a good or or bad traits they bring to the table. I can be a great. I think I'm a fair, good, nice person, but I also have some. At the time, I had a, bad, a lot of bad habits that I was doing. I was influencing my friends to do the same thing. So when they made that decision, I've always respected it. You know. So so for example, I go to the Bible study, but it doesn't mean I'm a Jehovah Witness. It doesn't mean I speak to them. I don't speak to them. And the reason why is because they're protecting the congregation, and I respect that. Until, like, I can finally tell them, like, hey, you know what? Talk to the elders and stuff like that. Be like, hey, you know what? I've been making my changes. I'm reading my Bible. I'm preparing. I'm doing this. I've stopped doing the things I'm doing, which I have. And I'm like, I'm ready. Like, I, I want to participate again. I want to be a part. And they're like, hey, look. And they ask me a few questions. Like, do you feel like you're good? Like, you've already prayed to Jehovah. Like, how's your relationship? We're good. Okay, no problem. And they bring you back in. And they, they allow you to be it, uh, a Jehovah's Witness, where you can actually represent the name. Because one thing that we're big on is, the Jehovah's are big on, is that they don't want to taint the name Jehovah. Tainting the name Jehovah is the most unrighteous thing you can do. So we're not, we don't want to play with that name. Does that make sense? Like, we just don't. So you chose Jehovah's Witnesses because, uh, not other churches, but because of they stand strong on their philosophy? They stand strong on what the Bible says. That's what I respect about them. That's why. Like, that's the thing why I chose. So the day in the, uh, there's not, not even churches, right, in the Jehovah Witness. How do you call it? We, we call them congregations and meetings, kingdom halls. Kingdom halls. So the day there is a gay marriage in the kingdom hall, you're done. They don't do that. It would never happen. It would not happen. But you would quit oh, right one, away. I would walk away immediately. This fast. That fast. 
You have to remember Israel. Israel, there's different kings in Israel. Those were Jehovah's people, right? There's bad kings that allowed for them to worship Baal. Baal's the same king that, the, that all these uh, politicians and all these artists, it's the, same, it's the same God that they're worshiping. Did you know that? The same, the sacrifice, the ones that, because Baal would sacrifice children, sex, orgies, homosexuality, murder kids, sacrifice children, youth of blood. That's a king, that was a God of Baal. Well, God of Baal was being worshipped in Israel. Powerful. So some kings were allowing it. That's why Israel would lose its, lose its uh, favor with God, and that's why they would get dominated by other countries mm. and other government and other countries. Like that's why the uh, Persians or Babylon, Rome, uh, Caesar's law, the, the Greeks, that's why they would conquer Israel. They're the most powerful army, bro. How did they get conquered? The moment they start to allow uh, wrong beliefs and corruption take place, that's when they got conquered, right? So now today, that Baal God is still being worshipped today. So if you tell me, if you tell me today he's still being worshipped, to today, here, here, you know that, that devil with the horns and stuff like that, that looks like a goat and stuff like that, with the, and like that God, the, the sacrificing children, why do you think right now kids go missing, they kill kids and they, they have sex with them and stuff like that? That we're still seeing in our politicians today. And you know what party I'm talking about. I'm not into politics, but you know exactly what party I'm talking about. Right? That, those people, like Oprah and all these other people that went to Jeffrey Epstein's uh, uh, island, all those people, all those celebrities, what do you think they, who do you think they're worshiping now? And now check this out. So if you're telling me that I see somebody or a religion or church that is ex that's accepting low standards, what makes me think that eventually they can't go and fall into the other stuff just like Israel didn't allow them to worship Baal in, in Israel? If you like this short clip, you are more than welcome to watch the full episode on my other YouTube channel called Apollo the Original.